Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We have started another playlist on ComSol Multiphysics for Beginners in 2023. This particular series comes with more information related to ComSol and if you are new to this software, this particular series will be helpful for you. So I would recommend you to watch the entire playlist so it helps you build up your knowledge, your understanding about ComSol. In the first video, we have discussed about an unsteady heat transfer in one dimension and today we will discuss about two dimensional heat equation, two dimensional heat flow. So as you know, we have to click on this model wizard and as we will be working with two dimension, we should obviously choose for 2D and I click here and as I have mentioned, when you click, you will get all the physics option. Say we will be working with heat transfer, so we will expand the heat transfer option. In heat transfer, you can see there are multiple options. In the first video, we worked with this heat transfer in solid in 1D. Today, we will be working with in the same problem in two dimensions. So, I again choose this particular heat transfer in solids option. So, once you double click on it, it will be added in this physics interface. And then now you have to go to study and you have to select time dependent because again we will be solving a time dependent problem. So when COMSOL takes the initial physics and the study option, it opens up this basic window. I already discussed this is a model builder window. This is the setting window and this is the graphics window. And when the simulation goes on, it shows few of the data. I will discuss about all the details one by one. Now it is very important to understand the window, the options which are available in the basic window. So the most important options are geometry because you have to create your geometry utilizing the options which are available in build here. So this is a this is like a CAD software where you get uh, basic primitives like uh, geometric shapes, say rectangle, say cube or a polygon or you can actually sketch your geometry. So you have the option of polygon, you have the option of arc, you have option of interpolation curve. So about geometry, we created an entire playlist. If you go through that particular playlist, it will help you understanding your concept. It will help you building your concept related to geometry in ComSol. Okay, so that was all about geometry. Now materials, I have been discussing about the material. In ComSol, they have a material bank. That means they have jotted down the physical properties either as constant values or a function. Function of what? Maybe a particular physical parameter could be a function of temperature and while you do simulate, your temperature throughout the simulation may vary. So you cannot take a constant value for a parameter. Then you can put it as a function. So all those things they have actually enlisted and they named it as different materials, say water, say copper. So we have been working with copper. There are even multiple copper options because you know in solids also they, there could be multiple phases of solids and there could be multiple properties where property variations in the solid objects. So the, those things you have to take from the material option. Physics option we have already partially used like we have chosen the option of heat transfer in solids. This is a physics in ComSol and during your simulation if you want to add more physics you can go to this option add physics if you click here then another window will be opened. You will be getting access to those physics option once again. And you can say, suppose suddenly I want to opt for fluid flow along with this heat transfer. So I can go to the fluid flow option and I can choose our, uh, our required physics from here. Once we are done, we can close this particular window. Meshing is important. We will be talking about it. We already have another playlist on meshes. So if you want to learn more about meshing, you should go through the playlist which we have created uh, uh, for meshing. Study, I have already talked about again what happens in study. So 
Comsol has created some inbuilt algorithm for solving the equations which you take as a part of the physics. Suppose in heat transfer, I have been discussing it multiple times. You have this particular differential equations. And when you put the nodes, like you right click here, you go for Dirichlet temperature boundary conditions. Suppose you go for uh, heat flux boundary conditions. So all those things come up with with a with an mathematical identity of different uh, uh, the uh, boundary conditions or initial conditions. So those nodes actually serve for the initial condition and boundary conditions. And once those things you have defined appropriately, then the problem is properly defined. And in that case, you have to solve it taking some predefined so study options. Suppose it could be a time dependent study option. It could be a stationary study or based on some particular physics. Like if you are working with optics, there could be uh, requirement of frequency dependent study. There could be requirement of some other kind of studies like eigenvalue solver or something. So with in with 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 the context of those optical or acoustics, we'll be talking about this eigenvalue solver, this frequency dependent solver separately. But here I'm just talking overall uh, why there is requirement of different studies. So in study, you also see there is an option optimization. So this is a very powerful option. You have the provision to optimize a particular physical parameter or a geometric dimension or a geometric shape or even a volumetric shape. So you can actually include optimization in your simulation in this particular series itself will come to that also at the end of this particular series. So that was related to basic things. Uh, once you done your simulation, you will be getting results as a data file. There are multiple options of visualizing the data. You can have 1D plots. You can have 2D plots. You can also have three dimensional plots or several other options. It is like a post-processing software, so uh, very similar to origin or uh, take plot kind of stuff. And other option is developer. I don't use much about it, but uh, this is an option through which you can build up your mobile app or app actually, Android app. So that app could be used for parametric uh, variations of a particular simulation. This is more related to the teaching stuff. Suppose you have created a particular simulation. You want to play around with different parameters and you want to teach. You want to show that to your students. So though for those kind of stuff, this is very much necessary. It could also be necessary if you have particular model, if you want to show it to your client, then this option is necessary. I'm thinking of creating another series on this application builder. I'm working on it. Even I'm not very much aware of this option, but I will work on it and I will create additional playlist for that. So in this video, we discussed about all the basic things. Now we go for this heat transfer in solid option. So initially geometry, we take a square for say, we work in the domain of centimeter. So we change the option, the unit from meter to centimeter. You have the provision to change it from here. For changing it, you have to click on geometry and come to the setting window and from this drop down menu, you can actually opt for your desired unit. Suppose square, we put each side say 5 cm. I click on build selected, it will be added to the GUI. Now material, suppose uh, we need to put a material, I right click on material add material from library, I click on it, uh, say recent materials, copper, again I will use copper. So I have shown uh, Dirichlet conditions multiple times. So uh, today I am thinking of showing you uh, some simulation uh, which contains a boundary condition other than Dirichlet boundary condition. So for that, what I need to do, I need to right click here. I need to see the options which are available. So you can see there is an option of heat flux. So I put a heat 
flux say at the bottom so say some arbitrary value say 100 watt per meter square I don't know whether it's physical or not but still uh, we can do that we can take another heat flux at some other boundary say this two boundaries and maybe we can put convective heat flux for this that means the outside may be get at a particular temperature so there might be a convection from outside to inside so for this uh, what you need to define you need to define a heat transfer coefficient again I do not have any idea about the uh, values of that but for the time being uh, for learning purpose we put it as one and the temperature external we can have a higher temperature say I put 500 Kelvin uh, yeah this is fine so two boundary conditions we have defined two heat fluxes uh, the, the first one is at the bottom and the second one is the two side walls and say the top wall I keep it thermally insulated the top wall now in this condition I go for meshing suppose I go for physics control mesh that's not good so what I can do is I can go for user control mesh not that uh, then uh, the option is we can change the element size say from normal to I do extra fine yeah this is good for the time being so most of the stuff are done we go ahead with the time range provided by default I click on compute option so there might be some result coming let's see what happens yeah it's, uh, the simulation is being started you can see yeah it started it's running the simulation and yeah so this is how the temperature uh, profile looks like after one second you can see with the existing boundary conditions so this is how the temperature profile now let us try to understand it in a bit deeper manner so at these two side walls we had a higher temperature that was around 400 or something we have taken 500 so uh, so the 500 temperature is being shown in yellow you can see okay uh, the temperature has not it has almost reached steady state kind of uh, if you click here it's 293 Kelvin okay uh, actually outside temperature is 500 but this is not the temperature of the wall it is the temperature of the external source and you have added a particular heat transfer coefficient based on that some heat is being flown to the inside boundary and that is why you don't expect getting 500 temperature at the walls although you have given 500 to the external now if I just try to explain it, uh, let us increase the heat transfer coefficient by 100 folds and then uh, quickly run the simulation again. So whatever now I am talking about, this is not related to COMSOL but this is related to understanding your physics. If you have a better understanding about your physics, you can see once you have increased the heat transfer coefficient, the profile becomes like this. So the heat transfer now is being controlled by this convective one because uh, we also had one inward heat flux here but now inward heat flux is not enough compared to the heat flux due to convective heat flow so what we can do arbitrarily if we uh, increase this inward flux and again run the simulation maybe there is a chance now heat flow will be controlled by the bottom heat flux let's see so again we run the simulation yeah again you are getting this kind of profile so this is this is how you can actually play around with different parameters and you can see the sensitivity of the solution if you do have a sensitivity of your solution if it is changing with the changing boundary condition then you can understand you are going in the right track if not then there are some problems with your simulation you have to come back you have to brainstorm and you have to look for 
appropriate boundary conditions and all so today i stop here if the videos are helping you please share the videos with your peers and i will also request you to subscribe to the channel for more updates